Welcome to Tech Central, welcome to our studio and welcome to the Insight series where we interview top executives in the technology industry. My guest now, all the way from London, is the recently appointed CEO of Africa Data Centers or ADC, part of Casavar Technologies and that's Tesh, Tesh, I hope I'm going to pronounce your surname correctly, Tesh Duvasula, is Very that good. correct? Very good. Right. Great, great. I hope you don't mind me calling you Tesh instead of Mr. No, Mr. Sula please do. It's going to be yes, like... please do. Tesh is good. <laughs> Tesh, you're, um, you're in London today. It's obviously been uh, just a matter of hours since the news of the passing of Queen Elizabeth. What's the, what's the mood? I must, I must imagine it's pretty somber in London right now. It is. Uh, it's somber and surreal. Uh, you know, visually, you have... Uh, these marquees at all the tube stations and the bus stops that uh, show a picture of the queen. So it's very uh, visible optically. Um, for most of us, it's, uh, it's the only queen we've known. Uh, for us and our parents and maybe even our grandparents, uh, when you have a 70-year reign, um, uh, unprecedented in, by any uh, monarch. That's uh, very, very, uh, very exciting. Uh, you know, just uh, it's taken a. It's been part of our life for so long. I, I, I'm not sure people can uh, put it into words yet. And then you know, I think about you know the queen, and and her uh, impact on Africa and how it it touched Africa. I think. And I don't know if my history is correct here, but I believe she was notified of her father's passing in 52 while she was vacationing in Kenya. And so, um, you know, her reign started in, in Kenya and, you know, she had very strong views about Africa. She, I think, was the one who eliminated the word empire when talking about um, United Kingdom and it, it's... Uh, it, it's uh, its prominence over uh, African nations. And under her reign, most of the African nations became independent states. So I think she was pretty clear in saying that, you know, people def defined by values and morals, not by borders. And, um, and then I think lastly, I would say um, in South Africa, you know, she had a very special relationship uh, with Mr. Mandela. And uh, their friendship when he visited uh, Buckingham Palace or when she came uh, to South Africa uh, was evident. Um, and then I'd heard a recent story that she used to sign her notes to him, uh, especially when, even when it was official business or unofficial business, uh, Elizabeth Regina, not the queen, not using her title. And he would sign hers back to her. Uh, Nelson. So uh, I think the yeah. Queen uh, definitely somber moment and uh, definitely an impact on on Africa. Absolutely, absolutely. But we're going to be talking about uh, empires of a different kind today, Tesh. <laughs> we're going to be talking about uh, we're going to be talking about cloud and uh, and the impact it's having on Africa and and uh, ADC is a leading player in helping bring that technological future uh, to to pass. Um, and I, I want to I want to unpack in some detail some of the uh, some of the work that ADC has been doing in the recent past. But before we get to that, uh, I'd like to know a little bit more about sure. you. Um, what is your background? Have you always been in the in the ICT space? Um, yeah. What you, and what, what are sure. your passions? Sure. Well, uh, well, well, from my from a hist uh, from a professional perspective, I I have mostly been in the ICT space. Um, I started my career. Uh, over 25 years ago in telecommunications infrastructure. I've spent time in fiber optics, uh, data centers, um, helped build a tower in, in North America. Most of my experience, uh, over 20 years of it, was North America. Then probably the last five years were in Europe and now most recently in Africa. And when you think about uh, capital and how much money is being spent on infrastructure. Obviously, North America, United States was leading the way. Uh, Europe and uh, you know Western and uh, Europe was was second. Um, now, over the past five years, past three years specifically, many of the emerging markets are spending time uh, 
raising capital for their infrastructure events. And um, for me personally, my career has been about building, helping these technology companies uh, make the world uh, smaller and bringing people together. Uh, as you know, Duncan, my tagline on my email says, data brings us together. And I've spent a career built helping uh, large technology companies build their infrastructure so we can all get a little closer together. And, uh, and that's what we plan on doing here in Africa as well. Great. And how much, how much time have you spent traveling Africa? How well do you know, do you know the continent? Uh, and, and what are your views of the opportunities as they stand well, to Well, uh, if, you, if, you if I spent every day of the last year traveling Africa, I don't think I'd still understand everything you need to know. Um, so I probably have somewhere between a uh, little less than 0.5% to 5% uh, of what I need to know. Uh, so I'm growing every day. Um, and it's been fantastic. I, I have spent time uh, in South, uh, East, and West Africa, primarily uh, Nigeria, Lagos, uh, Nairobi, Kenya, uh, Cape Town, Johannesburg. Uh, we're, we're currently acquiring lands in um, North Africa, uh, Morocco, uh, Egypt, uh, DRC, Togo, uh, so we're we're definitely moving around uh, the Africa, the continent. Um, what have I learned? Um, in a nutshell, the youth of Africa are restless, educated, and excited about what's going to happen to their continent, and. I call them the restless youth of Africa. They want to do things, and they don't want to do them the way their parents and their grandparents did them. And so they are anxious to use their mobile devices, stay connected to the world, be part of the digital economy, the global digital economy. And uh, that is what's driving uh, the demand in Africa. But more importantly, there's an intellectual curiosity and there is an excitement uh, from Africans around that. And that, to me, is what the opportunity is all about. So to circle back to your question, what have I learned and what have I seen? I've seen a beautiful continent of unbelievable opportunity um, and a, a thriving, energetic workforce that wants to participate in it. Would it be fair to say then that uh, you believe that South, uh, not South Africa, Africa as a continent is on the cusp of a technologically led revolution? Yeah, I wouldn't use the word revolution. I think I'd use evolution. Um, I, I believe that you culturally data is, it's ones and zeros. It's extremely binary. So the, the, the language of math the currency of data is, is simple for us to understand. When you get to Kenya and you realize there's 40 plus tribes, you know, is there a way that I, anyone can use words to bring 40 plus tribes together over years of uh, culture? No, but if we're all using the same app and we all have the same uh, device, we can. And I think that's the challenge. Um, I think that what I'm seeing is the evolution is real. Um, you're seeing uh, some of the larger economies drive drive the first stage of it. So you would think that the examples like Cairo and Joe Berg are you know leading the way, but I would tell you that the the countries that have large populations uh, are also coming up. That vector of uh, population and and which is cr creating demand, is the, the next vector that we should look at, not just GDP. And Africa's got 50 cities with over a million people in it. And I think they'll have 10 or 12 cities in the next three years that will have over 10 million people in it. And they'll have a few that have over 20 million people in it. So when you think about that, uh, that type of population growth, uh, this 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 cusp is is happening fast, and the momentum is there for it to succeed.
Now we just got to bring the capital and the execution to it. So I want to I want to spend some time talking about some of the new frontier markets that you're uh, that you're expanding into, and you've you've mentioned some of those markets already. But let's talk a little bit about ADC first, sure. for the benefit of people who perhaps don't know a lot sure. about the company. You're part of Bar Technologies. Um, there was a big restructure of of uh, what used to be called the Liquid Telecommunications yep. Group not long ago to form Casavar Technologies. Maybe just briefly spend sure. a bit of time on what Casavar is, why it was created, and how ADC fits sure. into that whole picture. So Casava, is, as everyone knows, uh, it's a household name because we all have cassava flour or root somewhere in our, in our, in our pantry. And uh, I think that's basically the foundational element or the ethos of our company. It, it, is, uh, it, is, it is uniquely African and it's Pan-African, right? So the Cassava is a, a holding company, a technology holding company that has a, a, a digital infrastructure piece of it and then has a services piece to it. The digital infrastructure piece has the fiber optic business, Liquid, uh, the data center business, uh, and then the renewable energy business, DPT. The services business has uh, a fintech business, and, and, and a wireless Wi-Fi type business. Um, in, in the network business, we had cybersecurity and we have cloud services, okay? And, and so together, bringing these five companies together, you can see that you can touch everybody and our, our, uh, our mission is to leave no African behind, but each of us at the individual company level have to, uh, attack that mission uh, with our own uh, perspective. So for me at ADC, you know, we're just over, uh, you know, 200 employees. Uh, we contract with another 150 type employees. So call it roughly 350 to 400 employees across four, four regions or four operating uh, areas, markets. Um, we build data centers. We, we have, uh, roughly uh, over th uh, close to 30 megawatts in production now. We're currently building another 30 megawatts, so we'll have about you know 60. We're operating in four jurisdictions, and our plans to expand into six more over the next three years. Um, so we'll have 10. Uh, our goal is to have 10 markets uh, by the end of 2025, from uh, Casablanca to Cape Town. And uh, Lagos to uh, from uh, Lagos to Nairobi will have the the continent covered, and that will uh, make us the largest Pan African uh, connected data center fabric in in Africa, which will then make it very attractive to large financial services, large healthcare services, large cloud companies to come and put their servers and applications in our infrastructure. So. Uh, when we talk about ADC and we talk about cassava, we're talking about can we bring technology uh, to the masses? Can we be pan-African and, and can we do it in an affordable manner? Mm -hmm. Great, great stuff. Now, we all know that building data centers of this sort of scale is a capital intensive right. business. Uh, you have announced recently uh, uh, a capital raise, which, I, if I recall correctly, was done through Cassava, Cassava mm -hmm. Technologies. Uh, Cassava, right? Cassava, a, a lot of our capital markets right. uh, activity happens through the group uh, holding company, Cassava. Right. But uh, the folks at ADC, uh, myself, my CFO, were also obviously very much involved in these things. Okay, so how, how much money has ADC raised to date, and and tell us a bit about this late, latest capital raise and what sure. you're going to be able so, to do. Sure. So um, the DFC just uh, 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 put uh, just uh, just under a hundred million dollars into us. That's the uh, you know the private equity arm of of uh, the World Bank. The uh, we have over five hundred and fifty million dollars committed for data centers. Um, probably uh, on on a when we think about we think about what we need to do. That's that's fully funded our plan for the next five years. So when I talk about uh, getting to 10 markets in, in the next three years, that's all within that 500 and um, 550 million. Um, you have a global supply chain challenge right now. 
So the requirement to have cash ready and available to pre-order equipment is very important. So having this cash and having these commitments allows us to keep on, on our plan uh, because you need to get in line which means you need to have deposits ready for all these uh, for all these uh, vendors, um, only uh, to wait anywhere from a year to 18 months to get equipment these days. But the process is still moving. And the one thing I've noticed across all of uh, North America, Europe, and, and Africa is that the demand side is still very robust. So because that demand is... Uh, continues to be there, the capital to, to chase uh, that, that, uh, that requirement is still also very robust. And I also think that over time, um, what you've seen is that Africa is becoming more attractive for foreign investment. So more of your DFIs have made a conscious effort to say, where can I put capital? Where can I get a, uh, a healthy return? And the last component, the last vector that I would talk about is not just the chasing the demand and, and chasing um, and, and being able to uh, put the infrastructure in place and get a healthy return, but the last piece is the ESG component. You know, where can your money do good? Um, and Africa is a, gr is a great environment for uh, sustainable energy. We have a solar division at DPT that I talked about. Uh, when you build networks, you are connecting multiple regions together. Um, you've you've traveled Africa. Uh, you're whether if, whether you're in a bus in Nairobi or a bus in Lagos, everyone's looking down and they've got their head down, you know, to their mobile phone. So you know, hundreds of people moving every day, still uh, looking at their phone. So there, there's a a big requirement to touch people and make. Uh, Make them part of the digital community and the digital uh, economy, and so I think the capital is there, and they are absolutely looking to put it to work in Africa. Do you see that uh, investment continuing for the next few years, given what we're seeing in, in in the global economic environment? Obviously, there's a lot of pressure. There's inflation running rampant in many markets. Uh, capital markets have come off quite a bit. We've seen tech stocks in the U.S. come down. Um, I imagine that's that's uh, shifting sort of priorities of of investors around the world and where they're committing capital. Uh, do you expect the investment boom that we're seeing in Africa, and particularly in technology and cloud, on the continent to continue for the foreseeable future? Yeah. Um the, absolutely. And, and, and I think it's because you have such a great opportunity. Um, you, you can question where the top of the market is if you're in a, in a very mature market like uh, North America or Europe. But we know that whatever we're going to build in Africa, we're going to build more of, right? These are the first data centers in some of these markets, maybe the second. And by North American standards or Western European standards, they're relatively small. And if you just look at other emerging markets uh, in the Asia, PAC Rim, or Latin and South America, similar demographics to Africa in, in terms of some of the city sizes and some of the economies, uh, we still haven't even scratched the surface. So uh, to just put it in kind of orders of magnitude, you know, what used to be a big data center in, in Western Europe was, you know, five megawatts. Um, now they're building 45 megawatts on a regular basis, 25 to 45. We still have very small data centers in, um, in, uh, in all of Africa. You know, some of the biggest ones are, are, are two to five megawatts. Western Europe, all of Western Europe is only 400 million people. There's going to be 1.3 to 1.4 billion people in, in Africa. So a 20 megawatt data center will definitely be consumed. So I don't think the risk of, of stranding capital or not getting used properly is there right now. In fact, it's probably one of the safer places right. to put it. Um, you know, especially now we've just finished elections in Kenya. They've been upheld. So 
um, everyone's happy and we move forward. Uh, these are the types of, you know, democratic, um, solid regimes that we're looking for to put capital in place. Yeah. Fascinating, fascinating. Now I want to talk about where you're going next. You've mentioned you're going to mm -hmm. six new markets uh, and you've mentioned some of those names. Uh, ones that stood out for me as you were talking with mm -hmm. the DRC mm -hmm. and Togo, which are probably two markets that are not normally mentioned in an African investment sure. context. Um, how, how do you decide where you're going to build and why these yeah, markets? Yeah, so we're in already in Togo. Um, and, and so uh, we, we're in a partnership with the uh, with the with the state to manage their data center, and so that's been uh, you know very we're very happy with that. Um, in in a in a market like DRC, and you start thinking about you know Central and Eastern Africa, uh, again the market the opportunity is the same um, at the macro level, and then it, you just can bring it down to any local market, it's the same. For us at ADC and at Cassava, we're very focused on North Africa, uh, Morocco and Egypt. We don't have a large presence there in, in any of the other businesses, uh, business units. So um, when ADC goes there, it'll be one of the larger uh, deployments and, and investments of, of uh, time and money. So, and it makes sense, right? When you think about, uh, when you think about the African 500, and the African 500 are the 500 largest African enterprise businesses, um, you get somewhere between 36 and 40 percent of those African 500 companies are in Cairo and Casablanca. So you'd want, you know, mm -hmm. it makes sense for us to go there and and participate. Obviously, both, you know. Uh, opening a business in Morocco is very different than opening a business in Cairo, and you have to be careful and thoughtful and, and, and choose the right partners and vendors in each market. But that's how we're thinking about it. So getting to the large enterprises, getting to the large areas uh, of GDP, and then also making sure that we – that third vector that I talked about earlier about population. So Lagos is obviously one of the largest cities uh, Nairobi is one of the largest cities. When you think about uh, Kinshasa and Kigali, you're talking about also multiple millions of uh, people. So those are why those markets are very uh, intriguing to us. And the, and the last part I'll make about the markets is you've got a large amount of capital, and this goes to your, your other question about capital in coming into Africa. Um, you've got two cable systems that are going in, around Africa. One is just from the E um, on the western side of Africa, um, the Aquino cable system, and the other was going all the way around uh, Africa, and I think it's called Africa Two. Uh, both of these cables are going to come in and have landing points all around Africa, and and then you're going to bring that capacity into the rest of Africa. And that is going to continue to drive more investment in, in all three parts of the digital infrastructure space, fiber optics, um, data centers, and towers and wireless. So um, I think those are going to you know, get us uh, to move a little bit faster. And as those cables come live, and they're all coming live slowly over the next uh, two years, you're going to see even more investment. So do you invest as ADC where those cables are coming ashore specifically? I mean, is that the opportunity near the landing stations to 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 offer services into those markets and into other neighboring that, that, territories? Or, that, or that's one, that is absolutely one strategy. It's not the only strategy. And, and a lot of us partner with others. Uh, so if you think about all the data center announcements that have happened across Africa, ADC has been uh, – been at the forefront of many of them, but uh, YOC has got their open data center business. Uh, uh, Main One was just acquired by Equinix. Uh, Terraco in South Africa was just acquired by Digital. Uh, there's there's companies like Raxio and Rack Center and their iColo. These are all small regional players that are also very active. And so, you know, I might not. I might go to Mombasa, I might not go to Mombasa, but Icolo may go to Mombasa, someone else will go to Mombasa. Uh, but I've already got a big, 
presence in Nairobi. So as we think about how we want to hit Lome and Lagos and uh, Dakar and, and go all the way around, you, you only have so much capital, right? So we can't go to all of them. Um, so we have to pick and choose which ones we want to go to, and and we're we're in the process of doing it. But like I said, you know, I think you know, Cape Town is a big big part of what we do, and we want to make Casablanca a big part of what we do. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk a bit about uh, green energy because it is a, a big topic and will continue to be a big topic. In fact, probably an even bigger topic going forward. Um, and th there's a lot of pressure already. We're seeing it on South African banks and and banks or finance providers around the world not to lend to projects that are particularly dirty in terms of carbon emissions, et cetera. And uh, we've seen some of those big South African banks already saying that they won't invest in, in new coal-fired power stations, for example. Uh, what, what is, um, what's the sort of discussion that's happening in the data center market here in Africa, including from an investment investor perspective from, from, from banks and other institutions that are lending for, to companies like ADC for the construction of these data center operations? What are some of the conversations that are happening there from an environmental sure. perspective? So uh, the environment is you know, one of the top three questions um, in sustainability and, and renewable energy are one of the top three questions we talk about. The, the challenge we have in Africa is, is getting any power in some markets is, is very difficult, mm. uh, let alone is it renewable and green. Uh, so we've got a unique perspective on this. Uh, we own and are part of a, of a, a group, Cassava, that has a renewable energy business in it and a solar energy business in it called DPT. And so we, we have a large commitment, uh, a 10 megawatt commitment of solar energy in our Cape Town facility that we're, we're working on with them. And we have a large hyperscale uh, customer who also wants to do, uh, bring, uh, help us bring that power in. And whatever we don't use, we're gonna give back to the grid, okay? Now, um, you're in Johannesburg, right? And so, you, you understand the concept of load shedding or brownouts. Um, we're There's no power right there as you speak, <laughs> believe it or not. So, so there, there you have it, right? So, you know, right now we've got to look at it from a, a practical level as well, which is we, we just need power first. Um, we mm -hmm. obviously ask the next question, how can we get off of coal or get off of the other uh, carbon-based uh, energy products and get into a solar or a hydro environment. And so it's a, it's a huge conversation. It's very important. And, they're, and everyone's trying to balance that aspect of what we want the future to look like with the current constraint of not having any power in some key markets. Um, Nigeria, for example, uh, you know, the grid has uh, some, some, renewable energy credit power and and it's also you know fueled by diesel and so you're you're mm -hmm. working you're working on both hands uh over there to try to solve the problem um it's it's uh it i don't think it's going to go away quickly and uh the companies like us who are focused on it hopefully will help others solve it um uh, over time but it's still a a major issue Mm. It's so very difficult, I guess, then to to be try and be carbon neutral in a data center environment in the context of I Africa. I think, in terms of firm deadlines, like we have goals and we're and they're very aspirational right now, because we need so many other partners to help us get there, right? Like if the South African grid doesn't get more stable soon, you know, it's going to be very mm. difficult for any of us who partner with them. Uh, to make any long-term claims till we have some sort of predictability. Uh, the good news is everyone's focused on it. Uh, and, and I think, you know, Duncan, that's what, my positive of all this is that everyone is, is, is very focused on it. Um, and so, yeah. I, you know, humans have proven that when we focus on something, we can usually solve the problem. And, and so hopefully we will, you know, get, you know, more reliable, more sustainable uh, power, more available. Right now, availability is a bigger problem. 
So, Tess, just on the, the energy crisis in Africa or the, the shortage of energy across the continent, what do you think the solution is? Do we need uh, a broad deregulation of energy markets in, in, across Africa? Does there need to be more competition? What's, what's the solution to this? Yeah, I, and so I think, well, it's an interesting question, and, and I, I'm going to start globally. The answer is that we've, we've had unbelievable demand in, in all markets, and the, the, the load-shedding situation that you're seeing in South Africa, uh, we have the same challenges trying to build data centers in North America and in Europe as well as Africa. There's just no energy out there. And, what I'm, and why I say that is because those are all three or four different types of structured markets, some regulated, some unregulated, some heavy competition, some uh, you know, more uh, less competition. So I think the, the real challenge is that demand so uh, quickly outs, outstrips supply and n the investment into production and distribution just has not been there. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know if it should all be deregulated and, and or should it all be, you know, can, can we can we trust uh, every state if we gave them, you know, a couple of shillings to make sure that they put a certain amount towards, you know, fortifying the power infrastructure. Uh, I'm, I'm not smart enough to uh, figure out which will Work, which will work best across all of Africa, but I will tell you that I'm conf I'm, I'm optimistic that as we all work on this together, we'll solve the problem. Um, we, for our our markets in in Cassava and ADC, we're going to continue to deploy DBTs, uh, solar solutions in our markets, and we're going to try to bring as much solar power back to the data center, and then whatever we have left, we can give back to the grid. And, and help the ecosystem of energy across uh, across Africa. But um, no, it is a very big concern, especially uh, in the data center market. Before I let you go, Tish, I just wanted to maybe get your views on some of the tech trends that are driving cloud adoption in Africa and driving demand for ADC facilities. Um, uh, and what are those tech trends and are they different to what we're seeing in other markets around the world? Um, I think some of them are different, and then others are very much the same. So, um, you know, most economies are are consumer driven, and the consumer is trying desperately to become part of, like I said, the digital economy and the digital, uh, the global digital economy. And I think Africans and young Africans, especially, are absolutely they're way more sophisticated than than you know twenty five years ago very educated and very intellectually stimulated around that. So um, all of your social media trends are going to continue to explode and they're doing fine. But, you know, regionalized content is going to, you know, start taking a, bi a bigger driver. So, you know, Nigerian women want to see Nigerian movies and soap operas and, and, and Kenyan women want to watch, you know, Kenyan uh, uh, um, content. And so that's going to continue to drive. But there's the more practical side that's also happening, and it's happening very fast. You know, the average African, it would take seven to 12 days to open a bank account. You know, now Echo Bank and the big companies in across Africa are making it so you can open an account in one day. Mm -hmm. You know, hugely empowering that is to people to be able to you know, be in their currency, be able to have it. So that then the second order effect. All right. So I've got my account. So now the fintech services are going to continue to drive. Right. One of the largest drivers of fintech services is cross border payments. So you're, you know, working in uh, in uh, in South Africa, but your parents are back in 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 Zimbabwe. Right. You know, the two different currencies, two different inflation rates, but that's a common that's a common occurrence. Fintech companies are now working on that, right? So they're standardizing for this. That's extremely valuable to you know families in uh, in Africa. So I think you see uh, the traditional trends that are driving social media and social aspects of life, and then I think there's this new set of uh, tech. Uh, applications are going to help practical uh, uses for 
African families. And I think that's where, you know, if you, if you actually sit down and think about it, what's going to start driving even more consumption of data, data centers, wireless, and fiber optic. Tesh, it sounds like you're going to have a very, very busy few years ahead building out infrastructure across the continent. I wish you all the best of luck with that and uh, all the fun you're going to have as well, I'm sure, uh, yes. uh, building, uh, building out these systems. Tesh Dervasula, have I said that correctly? Yes, very good. Thank you. Thank you. He's Chief Executive of Africa Data Centers, ADC. Thank you so much for joining Tech Central today. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Thank you so much.